Hello everybody, welcome to another video from Code Coach with Profanis. In this video, we will go through the local change detection via a UI explanation. You will see what the default change detection strategy is, what the difference is with on push, and last but definitely not least, how we are achieving a local change detection by using signals. Without any further delay, let's get started. This is the application that we are going to work with. It's a tree of components. Every node is a different component and we have one, two, three, up to 13 different components here. What we're going to do is we would like to see whenever the components are change detected. And like I said, we will have a UI representation. Whenever a component is change detected, we're going to change the color of the background. At first, we will work into the 13th component by increasing the counter using a set interval by 1, and we will see what is happening. And like I said in the beginning of this video, we will see how to have a default change detection strategy, on push change detection strategy, and then the local change detection strategy. So let's start with the default one. Into the VS Code, I have here many different components and every component has a change detection strategy default. So into this component, into the 13th component, I have a send interval where I'm going to increase the counter by one. At first, we will work with a behavior subject, increasing the counter by one, and then we will see what the difference is by using a signal. Since we now have here this kind of observable, I will grab that and I will go into my template and use the counter by using the async pipe. And like I said, we have a default change detection strategy. So let's see what is happening. As you can see, by increasing just the counter of this component, Angular doesn't know how to render this component. So what it does is starts a change detection from top to bottom and marks every component as dirty. And this has as an outcome to change detect every component. Of course, this is not an ideal scenario since this will affect a lot of the performance, especially the performance of a large scale application. How about now? What will happen if we change the change detection strategy from default to on push? So let's give that a try. I would like to replace the default with on push. And I'm not going to do any other change. So let's see what now will happen. As you can see, we are increasing the counter by one. And only the ancestors of this component are marked as dirty. Again, Angular has a top to bottom change detection strategy, but this time marks only the ancestors as dirty. Nice. Of course, this is much better in terms of performance, but still, this is a very small scale. This is not a representation of an enterprise application. And an enterprise application perhaps will have a much bigger component tree. And again, this is not ideal. How about now if we have a local change detection? And to see that happening, I will replace this counter from an observable to signal. So let's see that. Here I'm going to have a counter signal. And this is going to be just a signal with a default value of zero. And now into the set interval, I will be this counter signal and I want to update this one by using the previous value plus one. Something like that. And then I will grab the counter signal and I will replace completely the async pipe. And now if we go to the browser, we can see that now only this component is change detected. How cool is that? Again, Angular has a top to bottom change detection, but this time it marks the ancestors of that component as traversal instead of dirty. But of course, having a set interval is not a real life scenario. How about now if we have a click event into this component? Let's give that a try. Into the span, I will have just a click event and this guy will increase the counter. The method currently doesn't exist, so let's create that. And I will have my crease counter where I'm going to 
simply move this guy here. Counter signal update and increase the counter by one. And let's comment this out. We no longer need that. So we have the counter signal, we have the bound here, and then we have the interpolation of the signal. So let's see. Now I'm going to click this guy, and at the time that I'm clicking, it seems that the ancestors of that component are marked as dirty. Why is that happening? So currently we have a hybrid mode, which means that we still have zone.js. And zone.js, what it does is that, among other things, it wraps the events, and whenever we have an event, it runs a change detection. So that's why whenever we're clicking this component, the ancestors are marked as dirty. So how can we fix that? So to fix that, we can register the click event using ArcJS. So let's give that a try. At first, we need here to have our host, which is our element ref. So I will have inject element ref, this guy. And now I can be like, I want to have my from event from this target, which is this host native element, this click event. And what I want to do is to increase the counter by one. So let's see what is happening. Now, whenever I'm clicking, we can see that this guy increases the counter by one and the rest of the components are not marked as dirty. They're marked as traversal. How about now if I want to have a communication between different components? Let's say that I want to have a communication of the 13th component with this guy, the component number two. Of course, we need here to have a service. So I already have a service and this is my counter service and I have a behavior subject and a signal. Let's start at first with the behavior subject to see what is happening. But the idea here is that I have my behavior subject and then I have this counter, which is the public one as observable. And I have two methods, the increase counter where I emit new value by increasing the counter by one. And then into the decrease counter, I decrease the counter by one. And then the same thing is happening with the signals. I have here my counter, which is a private one and is a writable signal. And then I have this guy, which is as read only, which is the public signal. And then I'm updating this signal by increasing the counter one. And I do the same thing by decreasing the counter by one. So let's see, I will grab the counter service and I will go into the 13th component. And I want here to have my counter service equals inject the counter service. And then all I want to have is to increase the counter, but this time I want to increase the counter of that service. And of course, we have to grab the counter service dot counter with an async pipe. Nice. So let's go now to the other component, the two component and do the same thing. And I forgot to have also the click event here. So let's have the click by decreasing the counter. Nice. So let's go to the browser. Now I have 13 with 0 and 2 with 0. And if I click, we can see that the ancestors of that component are marked as dirty. And the same thing is happening here. Why is that? Of course, because we used the async pipe, the behavior subject. How about now if we replace this thing and this time instead of having the observable, we will use just the signal. The same thing we have also to do into the 13th component. So let's go here and be like, I want to have here my counter and see what is happening. Now, if I click, we can see that we update the value here and we update the value here. And it seems that we have a nice communication between two different components. And of course, if I click now this guy, we expect to decrease the counter by one. We are decreasing the counter, but at the same time, we mark the ancestor as dirty. Why is that? Because this one is using the click event. A possible solution to this one is to remove the click event from this node and move that in the same way that we did here. So you might be wondering, is this the way that we have to go? Is this the way that we have from now on to handle the click events? Well, I don't think that this is the case. 
I would expect when the signal-based components become a thing, not to have the events wrapped by zone.js, but instead have different handling to support the local change detection. As of today, the change detection is top to bottom, which marks the ancestors as dirty and non-traversal. Cannot wait to see this feature released. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. I think that the local change detection is a great improvement in terms of performance and will change a lot the way that we are trying to improve the performance for a large-scale application. So let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.